Hello, this is Darren Craddock from Inner Health Botanicals with the Daily Dose. Today's Daily Dose, as you can probably tell, is from a different location. I'm actually up in Colorado right now, um, not back in my home state of Texas. So uh, the lighting and the background is going to be different, excuse me for that, but uh, the information is good as ever. And today I'd like to ask you a question. Today's Daily Dose is, are you afraid of your doctor? Funnily enough, in a recent article I just uh, just read in the last couple of days, uh, believe it or not, on a mainstream site, Yahoo, uh, the studies they've done recently have determined that over 80% of people are afraid of their doctors. No, they're not, you know, like uh, afraid their doctor's going to pounce on them or scare them or come after them like an Alfred Hitchcock movie or anything. No, absolutely not. But they're afraid to ask them questions. Questions that can and will affect their health. And so it comes to me, you know, as a big surprise because a doctor is a service provider. A doctor gives us a service that, you know, we determine that we need or we don't need. But that we should be scared to ask them. If I go in, even into a store like Barnes & Noble to buy a book, I'm going to ask advice on that. You know, if, if there are three or four books on the same subject, I'll probably ask a clerk what they've heard about it. If I'm going to a health food store and there's a new product, uh, I'll ask them questions about that too because really it's so important to know the quality of the service and the quality of products we're getting. And if we don't ask questions, how are we ever going to know? It seems the phenomenon has developed over quite some years now. They call it the white coat phenomenon. And that phenomenon basically revolves around the concept that people are intimidated by doctors in white coats. They figure that, well, uh, they must be people of authority. In fact, when they're filmed or pictures are taken, management tells them to put their white coats on because studies have indicated that people consider that to be a measure of authority. But where does that get people with regards to their health? Well, in an ideal world, all doctors will be there looking out for every single one of us. And many of them are. I mean, honestly, many of them really, really are. There are, you know, definitely others that are in, in it for the money. I mean, when you consider that certain operations, surgeries in, in the cardiac department, for example, can cost anywhere from a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars for a surgery, for a single surgery, you know, so Money is definitely involved in the whole medical system as we know. But let's look at some of the main areas where I think you may want to start asking your doctors questions if you are still going to a doctor. I don't personally use doctors um, because I take care of you know my health in every way I need to without using doctors. Now, were I to break a limb? Absolutely. But many people, let's face it, go to their doctors for all sorts of services like their blood pressure is high. They want to go and find out what they can do about it. Now, many doctors are used to patients coming in and saying, Doc, give me a med. Now, if you go in and you say to your doctor, you know what, I really would rather not take medications. What can I do to get my blood pressure down without using medications? Now, first of all, you'll probably surprise your doctor because they're used to listening to um, questions, really, or requests, I should say, for medications. So if you ask your doctor, what can I do to get my meds down, you'll get a good sense, or not use meds, you'll get a good sense of your doctor's standpoint on that. If they come back and say, well, okay, let's try between now and the next appointment in a month, and let's make these changes and see if it helps with your blood pressure numbers. That's the kind of doc you want, one that will work with you. Um, you may want to ask them, do I need meds? You know, because for a large number of doctors, that's just the routine approach. If your, your initial thought is you might need surgery, you can also ask your doctor, do I really need surgery? Are there other alternatives? Don't be afraid to ask these questions. And if you're concerned about having to go back for frequent visits and how that might hurt your pocketbook, ask your doctor, well, is there any way I can send you specific information so you can monitor me from a distance without me having to come in for these appointments that maybe my insurance doesn't cover or I can't afford the copay or whatever it may be. So ask your doctor, most of the time they will work with you. Um, you may also ask your doctor if you're somebody that's taking medications, as you, those of you who know me know that I don't really um, promote in any way, far from the truth, uh, medications. I have uh, 
a major, um, I guess, affinity for herbal meds <laughs> or herbal remedies. And I, I know and have used those with my kids growing up, for myself. I've never had to use any medication um, that I can remember in the last 30 years. So I think that's a pretty good track record. And I've been advising people in that regards for a long time too. But if you do take meds and you don't want it to hurt your pocketbook too much, ask your doctor if there are generics. Or start learning about herbal medicines because there are herbs for almost every condition you can imagine. And if they're taken correctly and you're given the correct advice and you employ them in the right with the right strategies, you can use herbal medicines for almost every condition out there. So think about these things. Please do not be afraid to ask your doctor questions. Dietary modifications, lifestyle choices, exercise herbs, specific nutrients, superfoods, etc. All of those things come together to bring you back to health. The fact of the matter is if you are sick right now, it's probably because of something you've been doing throughout your life up until this point that has brought on that condition. Yes, there are certain genetic contributing factors, but you can have two twins, both of whom have the same contributing factors, one being very healthy and one being in terrible health, based upon their lifestyle and dietary choices. So I hope you'll take this uh, advice to heart and not be afraid to ask your doctor questions. This is Darren Craddock from Enter Health Botanicals with The Daily Dose.